My very warm greetings to all. Thanks so much for once again taking a moment to join me for my weekly Journeys and Insights update. As we look toward our celebration of Ascension tomorrow, we are reminded of the essential requirement of our Christian discipleship. Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. So often, and I speak for myself, this core mission bestowed at baptism can become obscured. We get preoccupied with so many activities, meetings, so many administrative tasks and necessary considerations. Our days are filled with things to do and accomplish all before yet another day brings with it new demands and new urgencies. And yet, as followers of Jesus Christ, it's all about this essential mission, proclaiming the good news, announcing the Lord's message of unconditional forgiveness, the gift of redemption offered to us all, the assurance of his strength and comfort in facing the challenges, anxieties, and sorrows that come our way, the promise that the Lord will work in us and through us just as Mark's Gospel for this Sunday confirms. The need to maintain this focus is why I make it a priority to get out of the Catholic Center in downtown Buffalo as much as possible, visiting our parishes, listening and learning with parish leaders, laity and clergy alike, visiting our schools and seeing firsthand the immense good that is accomplished by our parish ministries as well as the ministries of Catholic Charities. This is what invigorates me and gives zeal to my own ministry. As such, I encourage you to find ways to be involved and engaged with your parish communities, to volunteer with any of the many ministries of Catholic Charities, to evidence conspicuously but in your own way, your personal discipleship. I promise you, doing so will provide you joy and fulfillment and the balance we all need as we also go about our daily routines of work, family obligations, and all of the activities that claim our time and attention. I want to mention what a privilege and joy it was to celebrate the right for the blessing of a child in the womb this past week at our cathedral during a special mass that honors the sanctity of life, God's greatest gift. I blessed eight women who were gathered with us along with their families and who are expecting the birth of their child. Together we ask God, the author of all life, to bless these unborn children, to give them constant protection and grant them a healthy birth. We then presented each woman with a special blanket of a symbol of how God wraps us in his loving care. It was especially meaningful to present a papal blessing to Mr. Michael Mambrea Sr., who has been so devoted to our work to promote life and who is fortunately going strong at the young age of 100. Last Saturday, I was privileged to join the members of the Movement to Restore Trust in a specially organized virtual discussion, during which Father Brian Zelineski discussed details of our Road to Renewal initiative. I felt that it was an excellent exchange and is exactly the type of engagement and dialogue I have made a priority in my efforts to reestablish trust and confidence, given the many difficult challenges this diocese has faced in recent years. This week has already been a very full one, with confirmations, which is always a great joy for me, celebrating the faith and commitment of our young people and those who have recently become Catholic. I presided at the Mass of Installation for Father Cole Webster at St. Peter's Parish, and then the final profession of two religious sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. I also visited Notre Dame Academy 
And this week, I will be at St. Bernard's University in Rochester, as well as St. Mary's Elementary School in Lancaster for a May crowning celebration. Finally, on Saturday, I will be at St. Gregory the Great Parish to ordain our third year seminarian, Joseph Tokas, to the transitional diaconate, meaning he will be ordained to the priesthood next year. Please keep him in your prayers in a special way. And so as you can see, we have many wonderful things to celebrate and together pray for. Please do so, and as I encouraged last week, keep our young people in mind, especially in these days when we're winding down the school year. And given all the particular challenges, they and our dedicated teachers and school administrators and volunteers have faced in the year of COVID. God be with you and keep you and all those whom you love safe in the days ahead. Know of my prayers for you, as I ask humbly that you remember me and yours. I look forward to speaking with you again soon.